Hi. Um, my name's Sarah Castle, um, and as David said, I'm a director of IFDU. Um, it's a practice which I set up with my partners three years ago, and this year's been really amazingly big for us. Um, in January, as David said, we won a, uh, a competition to design a new pavilion for the London Festival of Architecture in Dulwich, and we've won a number of awards. Um, but kind of most significantly for us, we've grown in the space of six months from a three-person practice to a 10-person practice. And this is us looking uh, very glamorous. Um, so the position we find ourselves in now is so vastly different from that when we set up the practice just three years ago. And even when I first started talking to David about guerrilla tactics and our approach to change, our practice is in a constant state of change. The projects grow in size and in complexity. The range of typologies are constantly changing and the team is growing. So to that, we have to change the structure, the culture of the practice. But these changes aren't an accident to us, they're by design. And we embrace the power of small, our ability to be nimble, to evolve quickly. Um, and today I'm going to take the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about our approach to change through three strategies that we've adopted which help us maximise the power of small. Define identity. So Thomas, myself and Al had been talking about setting up a practice together for a long time before we set up IFDU. We didn't have any clients, we didn't have a big competition win, but we did have a big ambition. And we set out to define this together, to define our identity. We wanted to think about the types of projects we wanted to work on, the impact he wanted to have. And we discussed the nature of architecture and began to develop this narrative together. At their most fundamental, buildings provide shelter. Um, at the best, they enrich people's experiences and improve lives. But the impact of buildings on both individuals and wider society is far greater than that. Buildings have ripple effects far beyond their walls, roofs, their immediate site, and the people that use them every day. They affect the communities that are around them. They affect the economy. And they affect the environment. And this ripple effect can go on for a very long time. Buildings take years to design and build, and they're around for decades, sometimes centuries. So the ripple effect that we create really matters. And so we decided that these ideas should be integral to our design process. And when we design with this big picture in mind, we can create architecture that benefits the people that use it, that has a positive impact on economies, communities, and the environment. And so in 2014, we established this new architecture practice to explore these ideas, combining testing, questioning, and imagination with action and, pro and practical go-getting. And this ambition became our name. And we continued to define this identity together, weaving this narrative that connected us as architects and that clarified our ambition to create buildings which had a reach beyond the site boundary to connect to people. And we wrote a manifesto together, which was rather scary at the time, given the fact that we had not a single client or a single project. Here's our manifesto. Every project starts with a question, what if? So this manifesto to us was about authenticity and it was about ambition. And in defining this identity from the outset, it was key to us as a team of directors, not just in agreeing the direction that our practice was setting out in and setting out the principles to which we were working to, but also defining the way that the world saw us. And we also realized the value of other consultants in helping us define this identity. Our graphic designer, Studio Thomas, and our publicist, Claire Curtis, have played this really important um, role in our development and have helped ensure that we consistently send out the same message. Engaging consultants can often seem scary as a small practice and can represent a really significant investment, but we decided that in order to be taken seriously, we had to take ourselves seriously, and we had to invest in this ambition and this identity. So the second point would be the curated output. 
Defining a clear identity can help clients decide whether you're the right practice for them as much as it can help you um, guide, it can help guide you in selecting the projects that you should be taking on. So as a small company with a limited resource, this selection process is really key to the way that you shape your practice. And so this process of editing and shaping a project list um, is not only applied to those which we take on, but also those that we choose to publish. Um, a clearly defined identity is reinforced by the projects we choose to publish, the, the projects that we choose to put out into the world. This is our curated output. And of course, like many young practices, uh, many of our early projects were small-scale domestic projects. This project at Well Street, one of our first, is one that we're really proud of. We poured over the detailing, we poured over the materials, and we poured over the way it connected to the garden. And we've done a number of projects like this, using them as test beds for our practice in many different ways. But we realized fairly early on that in order to realize our bigger picture ambitions, we'd need to ensure that the face that we presented to the world was aligned with our manifesto, our company identity. To put it simply, filling our website with domestic projects would likely lead to more small-scale domestic projects. And so we developed this technique of curation, of the strategic publishing of projects, to present to the world not just what we are doing, but what we want to be doing. And this curated output can be best demonstrated on our website. Um, so if I can, there we are. Um, so here you see the projects page of our website, the, the first bit. At pre now at present, 60% of our work is small, probably smallish domestic projects. But online, on our website, only around a third of the projects we present are domestic. And in fact, when you click on this project section of the website, the first four projects you're greeted with are not domestic at all. Here you see the Dulwich Pavilion, which was a cultural project in Dulwich this year. The Joseph Walsh Studio Workshops, which is an industrial project in County Cork, in fact, a master planning project. Six, St. Teresa's Sixth Form Centre in the bottom left, and this is an educational project in Surrey, which included a master plan and the Lower Marsh Smile in the bottom right, um, and that's a meanwhile use community space. And of course, as you scroll down, you, the domestic scale projects start to appear, but they're carefully selected, carefully curated. And we also realized that this curated output did not have to be solely comprised of complete projects. As we all know, good design takes time, building takes time. And so as a young practice with a big ambition, we didn't want to wait for multiple projects to complete on site before we had a website to show everyone. So commencing stage one on a project or winning planning permission for a project is just as important as completing a small scale residential extension. Take this example um, from Joseph Walsh Studio Project. Now this is one of a set of three visuals produced by Forbes Massey. Um, for the master planning of some workshops that we were uh, designing. These images were developed at a very, very early stage in the project and represented a really significant financial investment for us as a young company. Um, however, we realize that there's value in this. There's value in engaging such an, a consultant to work with us to produce images which would not only excite our client but also have significant PR value. These are images of a large-scale, highly ambitious, non-domestic project, and they're of a quality that interests the architectural and design press. Here, in the Architects' Journal, and here, at the RA Summer Show. These are images of a building that is not complete. However, they've helped us to build our presence online and to define our identity in the media. They're part of a curated output that resonates with our manifesto, with our ambition. My final kind of takeaway, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, is, is leveraging opportunity. Now, in curating work in a certain way, we create a hierarchy or a preference to the type of work that we're doing. And as I said previously, a curated output, which is comprised solely of domestic projects, is likely to lead to more. And whilst we really enjoy working on small domestic projects, our ambition is larger. And so we're selective in the way that we use these projects and we leverage our portfolio in different ways, the result of which we hope is often greater than the sum of its parts. 
So in early 2016, we had just one complete project on a website, that Well Street extension that I just showed you. Um, and we entered an EOI, um, which was run by Lambeth Council and Meanwell Space, CIC. And the project was to help transform um, a former library um, in Waterloo in London. Um, it was, um, a, the library would be, which had been relocated um, was um, on a site that was due for redevelopment in a few years' time. But rather than leave it empty, um, the question was how to use a low budget to, ma to maximise the site and to give something back to the community. So the project had a low budget, but it had a big ambition, and it really aligned with our manifesto. And so it was a project that we were really keen to win. So if you look at these three projects up here, we pulled this portfolio together, um, but having really very little work to help us with that, we chose two projects that we had actually completed um, outside um, of IFDU prior to setting up the practice and not as part of a previous office or a previous employer's portfolio. These projects cost a few thousand pounds each to build, um, but they had a small but notable impact on local communities. And we also teamed them with our, our kind of um, favorite uh, residential project. And we leveraged this small but carefully selected um, set of projects to win an EOI. And today, the building is nurturing small businesses that would otherwise wouldn't have had the opportunity to work in a central London location. This is a project that speaks of our manifesto and encapsulates the wider reaching benefits of such projects, taking a building that has limited remaining lifespan and transforming it into a social and economic asset for the local community. And it was in fact a combination of this and um, our small project at Well Street that we submitted for the EOI set by the London Festival of Architecture to design the first ever Dulwich Picture Gallery Pavilion this year, a competition that we happily went on to win. And again, it's this combination of small, budget, small low budget projects that we leveraged and that became a springboard for our practice. The Dulwich Pavilion has been really well published and has won awards, and this has helped to define our practice in the context of its larger ambitions. And by way of another example, um, a chance encounter in July last year led to a conversation with a head teacher of St. Teresa's School in Effingham, and they were looking for an architect to design a new sixth form centre. So being as excited as we normally are when we go into these meetings, um, we discussed um, every possibility um, for them, and they really enjoyed our energy. We were talking about the idea of actually considering the site as a whole, taking every building into consideration and trying to investigate really what they needed as a school. So of course, they were excited by this ambition, by this energy, but we needed to come to them with a portfolio of projects or a, a portfolio to present to them to win this pitch for the school. And of course, we were competing against a lot of architects who had significant educational experience, who had designed and delivered schools time and time again. And we had none of these projects on our, in our portfolio. But we did have a master plan for a campus which demonstrated our ability to strategically think about sites and define development over the period of five to 10 years. And we also noted that in designing a sixth form centre, the school would be um, plowing money and time into the project over the course of two years. And there was actually something that we could give to the students during that time. There was an opportunity for us to talk to the students, for them to talk about, about architecture. And as a girls' school, trying to get girls into the construction industry could be something that we could sell as part of our services to the school for that pitch. And we also surrounded ourselves with the right team. So at the bottom, you can see um, the, uh, an image by Fluid Structures, who are our engineer for this project. And we use this as our kind of steady hands. They built buildings, um, built educational buildings before, and they were our kind of uh, wise, um, wise team member. Um, so I think um, it's also important to say that that middle photograph is, is a teacher, is as teaching at Brighton University and the London School of Architecture. Um, and that became really part of this presentation that we made to win this project. And so less than one year from signing um, this appointment, the Sixth Form Centre's on site, it's under budget, and it's going to be delivered um, not just on time, but before the completion date that we had originally set out together. And it's a building that will be carbon neutral, and it's got enough solar panels on the roof to not only power itself, but to give energy back to the school. 
Um, there's an image of it here. And it's got a combination of wildflower roofs and built-in bird and bat boxes that increase the biodiversity of the immediate surroundings. So whilst this building will create much-needed social and educational spaces, spaces for the school, it will deliver so much more to the wider community. So moving forward, we continue to combine these projects, the few that we have, to create new opportunities for our practice. Um, and so far in 2017, the strategy has worked. I'm happy to say um, we're working on multiple large-scale cultural projects in London. We've recently been commissioned to do an exhibition design for a significant central London gallery. And we've, we're working on a fantastic new community build project with Southwark Council um, at the moment, which we're really enjoying. So looking further at this handful of projects, and just quickly to note, there's only six things at the beginning of this slide. They are, and the IFD projects um, are just one small domestic project and a master plan. So for us, it's been a combination of strategy and hard work to develop our portfolio to match this ambition. And we understand that our identity is not solely defined by the projects that we work on, but also the activities that we undertake. Through our involvement in the London School of Architecture, in REBA Southeast, the Social Mobility Foundation, Urbanistas, etc. Each of the networks we belong to, every lecture we do, every society we join, they not only help us work towards the ambition we set out in our manifesto, but they help us to build the presence of our practice. And they enable us to appear in lots of places very quickly, for instance, here. Um, and so these activities become part of our portfolio, and we use them to pitch for work, because every activity counts. So to conclude, um, for us, change has been rapid, and it can sometimes seem like luck. But somebody recently quoted, um, I think, a, a, uh, it's a quote by a golf player called Gary Player. Um, the, the harder I work, the luckier I get. And I think for us, um, it's more than that. We've grown from three to ten this year, and we're working hard on projects that we're really enjoying and we're delighted to have on our books. And yes, there's some luck involved, and of course, a lot of hard work. But there's also a clear strategy define identity, curate output, leverage opportunity. So our approach to change evolves and adapts as we grow. And we've learned that being small doesn't prevent us from thinking big. Thank you.